But first, if you are keeping score at home, today was the day we went from asking whether the Gulf of Mexico would survive the BP oil disaster to asking whether BP would survive the BP oil disaster. Check out the top of Britain's ITN News broadcast tonight. BP's share price tumbles as the Gulf disaster takes its toll on the oil giant's financial future. Today, BP's stock price in Britain cratered. It was the biggest one-day dive for BP's stock there in 18 years. It's already the worst oil spill in U.S. history, but this disaster has now turned into a financial one that's threatening the very existence of the British oil giant. If criminal charges are brought against BP, the financial penalties could be enormous. One reason why BP's share price tanked this morning, going down 15% in half an hour. BP, the company, ultimately lost 15% of its value in the London stock market today. The news for BP here in the U.S., not much better. BP stock sank as soon as the market opened in the U.S., and it never recovered. Their stock fell 15% here as well. We are in day 43 of this disaster. So why is this dramatic financial repercussion happening to BP now? Well, it's in part because over the weekend, BP announced that the top kill had failed. Oil continues to gush out of BP's leaking well in the Gulf of Mexico, unabated. Now that the top kill has been tried and failed, the company says it has some other tricks up its sleeve to stem that seemingly unending flow of oil, including another attempt at a containment dome, only they're now calling it cut and cap. That effort is underway right now. It should be noted that these new methods are no longer about actually stopping the flow of oil from the well. They're rather about sucking up as much oil as possible from the well as it continues to leak. BP appears to be conceding that they can't really stop the leak. The most likely scenario at this point is that the well will continue to gush until maybe August, when relief wells can hopefully reach the source of the leak. We'll have more on that in a moment with NBC's Ann Thompson. But this disaster is already an existential crisis for the Gulf of Mexico. The U.S. government is now raising the prospect that this ought to be an existential crisis for the company known as BP as well. As in, could this make BP disappear? The tools that the U.S. government has at its disposal to make a threat like that are for reals. This is not a theoretical discussion. As we speak, Democrats in Congress still trying to find a way to pass legislation to raise the liability cap for oil companies from $75 million to $10 billion. It's an effort that's been blocked by Republicans in the Senate three times so far. But if BP were to be found criminally liable for this spill, that cap wouldn't even apply anyway. And on that front, the Attorney General, Eric Holder, was dispatched to the Gulf Coast today, where he announced that the Justice Department has opened a criminal and civil investigation into the BP disaster. Our environmental laws are very clear, and we have a responsibility to enforce them, and we will do so. We will prosecute to the fullest extent of the law anyone who has violated the law. We will prosecute anyone who has violated the law. As far as determining whether any crimes were committed in this disaster, a senior Justice Department official tells NBC's justice correspondent Pete Williams tonight, quote, the simple fact that there's oil in the Gulf is evidence of a crime. There are all sorts of federal laws that BP could be on the hook for here. But there is one in particular that is worth keeping in mind as this disaster progresses. It might even be worth right-clicking it and saving it to your desktop to look at every day until this is all sorted out. It's called the Clean Water Act. The Clean Water Act was passed by Congress in 1972. It has been amended a number of times since then. Among other things, the Clean Water Act gives the Environmental Protection Agency the power to seek civil penalties for each and every barrel of oil that leaks into U.S. waters. In this case, the Reuters news organization turned up what they call a, quote, little-known, seldom-applied clause in the Clean Water Act. According to EPA documents obtained by Reuters, the basic fine, according to the Clean Water Act, is $1,100 per barrel spilled. But if a federal court finds that gross negligence was behind the spill, that fine could rise to $4,300 per barrel spilled. $4,300 per barrel. 
Ready to do the math on the BP oil disaster? Federal officials now estimating that anywhere between 12,000 and 25,000 barrels of oil have been pouring into the Gulf of Mexico every single day since the end of April. If that rate continues until August, when the relief wells are complete, fingers crossed, the total amount that BP could be on the hook for just from the EPA, just for this one law, just for violating the Clean Water Act, could be as high as $10.7 billion. That would be if BP got slapped with the maximum fine. That would be $10.7 billion on top of all of the other cleanup costs, all of the economic injury claims from local businessmen, all of the liability to states for tourism lost, and whatever criminal charges the Justice Department turns up. And now you know why BP originally estimated that just 1,000 barrels of oil were pouring into the Gulf every day, a figure they later had to amend under duress up to 5,000 barrels a day. During that time, BP's CEO, Tony Hayward, tried to downplay the impact of the spill, saying the spill was, quote, relatively tiny compared with the very big ocean. He also said the entire environmental impact of the disaster would be, quote, very, very modest. After new revelations that it might actually be more like 12 to 25,000 barrels per day, BP's CEO now says there's, quote, no evidence of those plumes of oil underneath the surface of the ocean. He says it's just what you can see on the surface. Swear. That might be possible. Maybe it is. But given the history of all the different ways BP has lied or been wrong about these things, all of them coincidentally in the direction of there being less oil in the water and therefore less financial liability for the company, coincidentally, their credibility on this is now as sunk as their stock price is. Joining us now is Chris Hayes, Washington editor for The Nation. Chris, thanks very much for joining us. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Rachel. It, it of course, has always been in BP's PR interest to downplay the size of the spill. But, but as we look at what sort of financial liability exists here, do we now have sort of a clearer motivation for the consistent low-balling estimates from the company? Yeah, clear, clearly, um, you know, everything that you just said in the intro about the, the per barrel fines that it is it is possibly liable to pay under the Clean Water Act. There's also the other fact of the royalties. I mean, they they owe it's it. it, it this is not settled yet, but it, they're probably going to owe, owe royalties to the U.S. government on every barrel as well. So they're they could be paying both in terms of fines and actually the money that they owe the government for royalties on both those things for every single barrel that comes out of the ground. Clearly, it's in their best interest to not, you know, to, 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 to lowball that figure. It, it appears to be up to the EPA to decide what sort of penalties to go for here. Is there any reason why the EPA wouldn't want to seek maximum penalties in this case? Well, no. I mean, on, on its face, of course not. I mean, this is the worst thing that's probably ever happened in the Gulf in terms of environmental degradation. It, it should be noted that these things play out over a very long amount of time, and that's one of the big problems. I mean, for the people that were affected by the Exxon Valdez, that was 20 years of litigation. By the time they got payouts from from uh, from court, I mean, a lot of, for a lot of them, the lives had been ruined. It had been two decades. And in this case, you, you're going to have the possibility of, if it's the coming from a federal agency, which is the EPA, it's going to have to hand that off to some other administration, either in two or six years from now, that administration might choose not to pursue the maximum amount of fines. So nothing is guaranteed about what they'll end up having to, having, having to pay. It's striking to see, obviously, the whole country so frustrated about the, the, the impotence here, not being able to get done yep. what needs to get done. And it's striking to see the threat of criminal charges and the specter of all of these other intense financial, pen, financial penalties to be paid by the company while the leak is still leaking, while, it is, while disaster is still undergoing. Is this strategically an effort to try to make BP do more than it is already doing? Or is this an effort doing this right now? Yeah. Is it just to make us feel better about the power of government? Well, that's a really interesting question. I mean, look, it seems to me that... It, there's at one level a kind of unsolved engineering problem, right? I mean, and you see one of the things around this is when the president speaks about it, and God knows I'm not an engineer, everyone's trying to kind of talk to, call engineers and figure out what this unsolved engineering problem is, and at the same time, there's this accountability issue, right? And the accountability issue, which, which you're speaking to, I think there's a real sense of growing frustration at BP, and generally that we've lived through this kind of accountability free era, and whether it's politically motivated or not, it seems to me that sort of staple of justice that people are held accountable for wrongdoing, particularly when wrongdoing is done on the scale that we're talking about here. 
In terms of BP's liability and sort of what blood can be wrung from this stone, obviously BP is a massively profitable yep. company, uh, company, as are all the major oil companies. Is there... Uh, is this an existential crisis for BP? Could it be? Robert Reich today floating the idea of BP being put into temporary yeah. receivership. Obviously, the prospect of these multi-billion dollar fines on top of all the costs, a significant financial issue for the company. Could this be the end of BP? Uh Sure. I mean, I think the short answer to that is yes. Look at Arthur Anderson, right? I mean, Arthur Anderson was one of the big five. It was one of the most famous accounting firms in the nation, and it winked out of existence because overnight it became clear that its liabilities in terms of gross negligence it had committed meant that it was going to have to file. And I talked to someone on Wall Street today who said, oh, my God, they might have to file. I mean, they the $10 billion you were talking about doesn't count just simple tort common law claims. I mean, every shrimper, everyone who has as an injury that can plausibly be connected to what they did has a tort case, tort case against BP plausibly, and that that doesn't even factor into federal law ca of liability caps. So 